And that is precisely in line with the encouragement from Pope Francis, who has asked that baptism in the Holy Spirit be shared with everyone in the church. And if you're not familiar with that expression, baptism in the Spirit means a deeper conversion to Christ when you give the Holy Spirit permission to release the graces you received at baptism and confirmation so that they work in a more powerful way in your life. And even if you have been baptized in the Spirit, then you may still not be making the most of the gifts that are available through the Holy Spirit. So this is going to be the focus of our, all of our meetings this year, as our theme is Alive in the Spirit, filled with all the fullness of God. It's a big and exciting promise, and we hope that you'll be able to join us for many of our monthly sessions as we unpack that promise and open ourselves to be filled more and more with God's fullness. And uh, Father Anthony is going to uh, give us the first talk on that in, in just a few moments. Uh, he's been involved in renewal for many, many years, so it's an absolute delight to have him with us. Uh, so I'm going to stop talking now and hand over to Father Anthony, who's going to lead us um, uh, in a talk and then prayer about uh, receiving God's love. Thank you, Father Anthony. Thank you very much, Alistair. And um, I just pray, Almighty God, thank you for this wonderful uh, ability to communicate through the online internet Zoom. We thank you, Lord, that we're really present to each other and you're really present to us. And uh, your Holy Spirit is moving uh, in us and through all of us. I pray now that that Spirit will continually uh, be with us, be with me, that I may say what you want me to say, that people may hear what you want them to hear, just so that this wonderful topic of your almighty love, your most faithful love for us, your constant love for us, uh, may affect our lives more and more, um, and, and that our hearts will be filled uh, with your utter fullness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. But that's not why I'm here today to talk about myself but to talk about this wonderful, wonderful reality of God's love for us. And let us begin by listening to Paul's prayer to the Ephesians. You may even know it off by heart. Let's just hear it afresh. Uh, Ephesians 3. This then is what I pray, kneeling before the Father, from whom every family, whether spiritual or natural, takes its name. Out of his infinite glory, may he give you the power through his spirit for your hidden self to grow strong so that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. And then planted in love and built on love, you will with all the saints have strength to grasp the breadth and the length, the height and the depth until knowing the love of Christ, which is beyond all knowledge, you are filled with the utter fullness of God. Glory be to him whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory be to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm delighted to be with you and talking about this tremendous love of God. You heard in Paul's prayer, you know, it's so vast, it's high, the depths, you know, and that it's beyond really our capacity to, to take it all in. And it's beyond knowledge. It's beyond all knowledge, he says, but, and he's prayed that, uh, that each of us, uh, you know, it, through, through, through the spirit, our hidden self will grow strong. Now, so constantly, as you open yourself to the Holy Spirit, be aware that your inner self, your spirit, your heart, your soul, your inner self is expanding, it's growing wide, it's taking in revelation. What we cannot get from study, our own human thinking, our own knowledge, we get it through the Holy Spirit, we get it through revelation. And so, uh, you know, and it affects us. The love of God affects us very deeply when we allow the Spirit to reveal it to us. If we just read a bit of scripture ourselves and say, oh, I don't understand that, or I don't agree with that, 
It's not about, it's about being open, really open uh, to the power of the Holy Spirit and uh, let him reveal to us through the scriptures, in our prayer, in the sounds of our hearts, this wonderful reality, God's love, which becomes our, our energy, becomes our life, becomes our power uh, to keep overcoming all our deep-seated inhibitions and compulsions and uh, it helps us to overcome all of these. Christ does it, living in our hearts, you know, a, a, as we repent of all those things and we fill more and more with God's love and it just, it fills us with joy. God's love brings us joy. But as Alistair said, uh, I think when uh, during that time of sharing, you know, not everybody, you know, understands or uh, adoration and, and, and love and, and has that response because human love, good though it is at times, human love uh, can be petty and stingy and, and self-centered, whereas God's love is eternal, it's vast, it's faithful, it's never-ending. There's a huge difference and so we do need God's love in our hearts uh, for our family life for our community life, for our parish life, we need God's love because we find all sorts of um, difficulties around us. And so I'd like to go, first of all, uh, really to the end, which is the, the, the effect of God's love in our hearts in a particular person in scripture and, and to help us to, to understand a little more God's love. It's in Mark uh, chapter 14, the anointing at Bethany. Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, why this waste of ointment? Ointment like this could have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they were angry with her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me is one of the good works. You have the poor with you always, but you can, and you can be kind to them whenever you wish but you will not always have me. She has done what was in her power to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. I tell you solemnly, wherever throughout the world the gospel, the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told also in remembrance of her. I chose that passage because it shows the effect of God, she, she met Jesus and, and, and his love for her had this deep effect on her. And, and we see the extravagance of her returning that love, going in, gate crashing Simon's house, going in and with this extremely costly ointment, more than a year's wages and, and breaking the jar uh, and, and then pouring it over his head uh, he says, as she said, it, the scripture says, poured it over his head and he said, she's anointed my body for burial. In the side, a little, little thing was a, a reference to John chapter 12, verse 1 to 8. And in that, we won't go to it now, but in that, uh, it identifies her as Mary. And, um, you know, it's, it's a similar story, but it's actually, her name is Mary. So a, a great effect this had on Mary. And um, so how did Mary um, get that revelation? Because she was with Jesus and was so moved by him. And that was her effect. Um, but then we go to Our Lady and we think of, of her constant love as a mother, filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly accepting sorrows and difficulties, but always there, being there full of love. So we ask her intercession today also for us, that we too can get revelation uh, on this tremendous love of God for us so that we can be extravagant 
that, that lady, in our love for God, in our love for Jesus, in our love for the most precious Holy Spirit. You know, there are three persons in one God, only one God. I hope we know them all. I hope we're getting to know them all. Father, Jesus, the Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life. Please develop, if you can, a, a, a relationship with each one of those persons. And we particularly need that relationship with the Holy Spirit because he is the one, the Holy Spirit is the one who brings Jesus alive in us and Jesus enables us to then worship God our Heavenly Father. So to help us to understand this tremendous love of God that affected um, Mary, that it may affect us, I've chosen two, two parables. Um, where are they? Tell you. It's two parables. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. A man finds the treasure and he hides it again. And with great joy, he goes off uh, and he sells all he's got he, and buys this field. The whole, he buys the whole field. And people must have been thinking the field isn't worth all that amount of money. But for him it is because he knows there's a treasure in it. But he's hidden it again. He doesn't don't want anyone else to get it. He wants it. God, Jesus, Jesus is the man. Jesus is the man who knows this treasure's in the field. God so loved the world, he gave his only son, uh, that all who believe in him might have life. And, and Jesus is, is, is the, uh, the man who finds the treasure. The field is the world. And hi hidden in the world uh, is this treasure. What is the treasure? The treasure, surely, are the brothers and sisters of Christ. People who believe in him. And people who can come to believe in him. Uh, and but I think the point I want, really want to make is that he paid the ultimate price. He gave everything for that field. That was his love. He wanted that treasure. That treasure is you and me. And he wants us to uh, he wants to to have us and to bring us into his life and to an experience of his love. Uh, so just just think, you know, that he, he shed the last drop of his blood for all of us. For the whole world, really, but particularly for the people who will come to believe in him. You know, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only sons that all who believe in him might not be lost, but might have eternal life. That's the gift of love. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a beautiful parable, very important one for us to see, you know, the, how powerful God's the love is for us. He sees us steeped in sin, the world steeped in sin. And yet in his great love, he asks each of us um, to be open to receive him. John chapter one, you know, the word became flesh and to all who did receive him, he gave them power to become children of God. Uh, and so this, this, uh, you know, just think of, of, of being part, we heard too that one of the ladies saying how she felt the sense of community, feel part, something wonderful. We are part of something tremendous, even through the internet. We're part of the body of Christ. We have a tremendous inheritance. Our inheritance in Jesus, we get the Father and we get the Holy Spirit. This wonderful inheritance, this great richness, this tremendous love poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So that, that's, that's the first uh, the first parable. Remember, parables are uh, ordinary things that people can know and relate to, and then Jesus draws another meaning out of them, a hidden meaning. Uh, and, and that's what he's doing all, all the time with us, because each one of us needs to receive this revelation. The second parable is the next, the next line. Um, I still haven't found it, never mind. It is, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant going in search of pearls. When he finds one pearl, which is so beautiful and wonderful, he sells everything, he gets rid of all his other pearls and all his treasures. He sells them all in order to get that one pearl. 
Just think of God's love for that, what, what he's trying to say through that little story. He's telling us that each one of us is as precious to him and he would have died just for you and just for me personally. Can we take that in? Ask the Holy Spirit just to give us a deep uh, uh, understanding that Jesus would have died for every single one of us. If it was only one of us, he would have still died in order to bring us back and to give us this experience of his love and eternal life, the kingdom of heaven. You know, so uh, two things. One is that, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he paid the ultimate price for the world for us. And secondly, just think of you. Imagine right now that in your hand is a most precious pearl, a most beautiful pearl, a priceless pearl, and it means everything. And Jesus in his story is saying that you are that precious pearl. You may think, well, actually, I'm not that wonderful. And, you know, oh, dear me. Um, you know, and I've always had this chip on my shoulder. and I've always felt, oh, but just as, as Alistair said, put all those things aside. Just put them aside and believe. Believe and ask the Spirit to enable us to believe. Holy Spirit, we want to believe. Lord Jesus, we want to believe. Help us to believe. Make us believe in your tremendous love and how precious each one of us is to you. We are precious, like that pearl. Just see Jesus holding you in the palm of his hand right now and looking at you and saying, you are precious. I died for you. I shed the last drop of my blood for you. That's how precious you are. All of this surely must help us to respond uh, as Mary did. Um, uh, in, in the gospel. Let's just now go to, um, I've got it, yes, uh, Jeremiah 31 uh, verse 3. This is to sort of emphasize from the Old Testament, from God our loving Father, is to emphasize God, how precious we are. Uh, in verse 3 of, of, of 31, Jeremiah, the Lord has appeared to him from afar. I have loved you with an everlasting love. So I am constant in my affection for you. See yourself in the palm of God's hand, in Jesus' hand, in the merchant's hand. See yourself just like that precious pearl. And hear these words again. I have loved you with an everlasting love. So I am constant in my affection for you. These are wonderful um, verses for the Holy Spirit to gradually deepen in each one of us um, a joy and a knowledge which is beyond all knowledge, which will help us to grow in our lives and to be filled with the utter fullness of God. You see, the Holy Spirit isn't just for renewal days. The Holy Spirit hasn't been given to us um, just for prayer groups. The Holy Spirit has been, is, is an essential. Uh, it, it's so, as Paul says, you know, that may you grow strong through the Spirit. It's been given to us so we can have a, a completely new dimension in life. Our own understanding, the understanding of scholars and everybody else is one thing, but uh, we need that revelation. We, we need wisdom. We need God's wisdom. God loves to share his wisdom with us. He predestined us before the foundation of the world that we would be holy and live in love through his presence, Paul says to the Ephesians. Uh, you know, before the foundation of the world, we were chosen. Before sin got into us, before we made all our mistakes, God chose us in Christ. God chose us to be holy. So don't let's be frightened of the word holy. Let it be a joyful word. Let it be a loving word. Let it be a, a word that brings us more and more fullness uh, of life in God. Um, 
So I think really, um, uh, I'm, I'm running out of steam. I think that's probably what I'm trying to say. Uh, but I hope that what I have shared is, is, is some help. Um, uh, as you know, I've got notes scattered all over me in front of me. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, if, if, if I had a little bit more time, I'd be a little bit more prepared. But I think it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I've prayed, you're praying, and it's coming out of my heart. And, uh, you know, I, and, I, and I pray for you. And I pray now. I pray, Lord, that uh, you will so bless each one of us who's gathered here today with the power of your Holy Spirit. Pour your Spirit upon us now afresh at this moment and lead us, lead us, Lord, uh, as each one of us needs to be led. Lead us so each one of us gradually knows how precious we are to you. Lead us, Lord, and fill us with your Spirit so each one of us can have revelation, can see things we never saw before, that we can know this wonderful knowledge and love uh, that you have for us. And we ask you, Lord, to bless now these months of renewal in our Alton day as we go through the steps of giving ourselves, yielding ourselves to the Holy Spirit and learning how to be led by the Holy Spirit, so that we can be obedient, so that we can joyfully do whatever the Spirit asks us to do. Thank you for the goodness, Lord, that is here with us today uh, in our Alton day, uh, and um, bless us all. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.